Okay, so um, today I will present you a little uh, provocative topic of advertising of surveillance, uh, and we will start with uh, this guy, uh, who is basically an American Catholic priest, uh, who uh, resigned from his position in church uh, in 2021. Uh, why? Uh, because of this article uh, published in the uh, uh, Catholic uh, newspaper, The Pillar, uh, so this, this uh, newspaper uh, published the information that uh, he violated the con commandment of celibacy because he, uh, he, went, uh, he went to the gay bars and bad houses and used, uh, used gay apps on, on his phone. And now, of course, the question is, how did the media actually get this information uh, about the priest? And this is where the story really uh, uh, starts to be very interesting. So behind this kind of spying, uh, actually there has been a Catholic organization, Catholic Laity and Clergy for Renewal, and they invested $4 million in checking whether Catholic priests uh, are uh, adhere to the commandment of the celibacy or not. So um, they, they collected the money. They, uh, they bought the, the information. We will talk about this a little bit later. Information from the uh, ad advertising networks. And uh, it took uh, uh, 52 weeks of this data to identify this guy. Uh, Buril, Buril, and uh, and then the the media published the, the information. They they nailed him to the cross, basically, uh, publicly, and his fate was sealed. Uh, so, uh, so this RTB data, real time bidding. So this is an online advertising system, probably you know or you have heard about that. And this enables the automated buying and selling of advertising space in real time. So uh, you can get very precise information about the, uh, how to target your advertising uh, campaigns. Uh, so you can select location, demographics, behavioral data and, data, and so on. And for instance, if you want to target, for instance, young women with children in the area of Ljubljana, then you can get the, those profiles and then you can show them ads. Or if you want to target the, the priests uh, who are uh, using gay apps, then you can also uh, get the information and, and show them the, the ads, or maybe uh, you try to identify them. So uh, this uh, system actually, uh, is basically a collection of various data, uh, which are basically demographic data, so gender, age, education, occupation, and so on. Then you have information about family status. Uh, then you have, this is very important, information about user behavior online, so search history, clicks, use of uh, uh, mobile applications, and so on. Then, of course, individual purchasing habits, location data, uh, uh, because we are always carrying mo uh, our mobile phones with us, and it's basically very easy to uh, to find out who is priest because this guy probably lives near the church, uh, probably is often in the church, and uh, based on the location data, you can uh, very cl clearly identify uh, uh, who is who is the real person uh, behind those data. And then there are some technical data about the user devices, so operating system, blah, 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 which could also be quite interesting because you know he has this type of phone, maybe he has some expensive phone or, or expensive computer and so on, and much more. So these data are very useful, uh, very useful for advertisers. Uh, and basically, when the, the, those uh, networks collect this data, then they, uh, in the background, they do user segmentation and then classify users into different categories like industry, manufacturing, aerospace and defense, family member of an employee of the military, and so on. So, elected official. And of course, for advertisers, these data are maybe not so important. For instance, if you are uh, uh, a guy employed by the military, but if you are a spy or if you are a military contractor, then this data could be very useful for you. So uh, the problem is, of course, that um, I will show you this a little bit later. The, uh, 
uh, there were some companies, there are some companies that are collecting this data and they're especially collecting the information about the, uh, if you are in debt, if, uh, what is your sexual orientation uh, uh, and, and other uh, things that can compromise you. So what is the volume of this data? So this is uh, one, uh, uh, two visualizations and basically uh, this is uh, active on all websites and mobile, on practically all websites, major websites and mobile applications. And uh, for instance, Google's RTB system is uh, currently having uh, 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 15.6 million websites and millions of mobile applications. And uh, they uh, collect uh, 42 billion times uh, they they, uh, they uh, transmit the data about user every day. So every day, a lot of data. And the problem is that Google is responsible only for 21% 20, uh, of these RTB uh, downloads in the EU. So for instance, for Slovenia, that means that for every Slovenian user, they have 233 broadcasts per day. And for instance, for, uh, for uh, Germany, I think it's uh, 340 uh, times a day, no, in, in, in France. So basically, several times an hour, they get some information about you, including your location. And this is then used for segmentation, and then this data could be sold to the, to the marketing agencies. So the question is, of course, what about the privacy? So the advertisers, of course, claim that these data are anonymized, and it's practically impossible to identify specific individuals. Uh, and uh, the question was, of course, then, this is here, written here, so the research question for our researchers uh, who wrote this article down here was, can a third party obtain private information about specific individuals by buying online ads? And they found out that for uh, roughly $1,000, they can monitor the physical movement of a specific individual uh, and uh, they can identify the, that specific individual. Uh, and I guess this was, you know, this was uh, research, uh, academic research, so this thousand dollars is very unoptimized <laughs> uh, amount of money. So probably if, if you uh, optimize your uh, workflow, you could uh, do much more with that money. So the question is, of course, this is very useful for advertising, for advertising companies, and uh, also for companies who want to, to sell something to people, but what about uh, for uh, intelligence agencies? And uh, basically the question is, what is the difference between advertising and spying? Of course, is, there's a big difference, but uh, they're connecting through data collection practices. So the, the, both, uh, the both systems, the both types of organizations are collecting data uh, in probably very similar way. Okay, the uh, intelligence agencies are also collecting other types of data, but the analysis then is done in, in, with, with the same tools. So uh, probably the question would be if you, will be the, you would be the, the director of some intelligence agency, why, why can't we use the advertising data for spying? So uh, last year in September, so this is one year ago, uh, Haaretz, this is uh, one of the biggest Israel uh, media uh, newspapers, uh, published this article, uh, which went quite unnoticed by, by, the, by the general public. Um, so they revealed that uh, Israeli cybersecurity companies has developed some new spyware tool. There is no they, they claim there is no defense, so I th okay, I think there, there is a defense, but it's hard to defend against that. Uh, and they didn't provide much technical information. Uh, however, uh, the security experts at that time, uh, I was talking with, with my friends, and so we, we suspected that basically they used this system to identify targets and to, de uh, to deliver uh, malware, uh, malware uh, to the mobile phones or to the computers. Uh, and basically, um, a couple of uh, months or weeks later, it came, came, uh, came out that it, it was basically, this, this was the, the, the case. So uh, uh, in the same month, uh, the Irish Council for Civil, Civil Liberties uh, uh, published a report, 
and they found out that basically anyone can get access to the RTB data. Of course, you need to be a company, you need to register, uh, register as um, uh, this uh, uh, advertiser, but it's not very hard to get the data. And they also find that um, RTB data are exported without any limits to countries such as uh, China or Russia. And they also find that, for instance, R Russian companies are collecting um, or buying the data about the uh, Russian citizens who are visiting the opposition websites. I guess that this is probably for marketing purposes because the government wants to introduce them to some to some prisons or something like that. Maybe to organize some some tours into the prisons. Uh, so yeah. So basically, the problem is that these data are uh, collected, are available, and then they can end up in in you know any any hands. Um, so. Uh, the problem is that uh, in, in Israel, there, there are a lot of companies who are um, working and selling and developing uh, software and uh, solutions for uh, cyber intelligence, uh, cyber security intelligence, and so on. And uh, there are companies that are registered as uh, advertisers, so the, uh, uh, basically they are DSPs, demand side platforms, and they can uh, get the data, they, they can buy the data di directly. So this, here are three, three companies, um, because those companies published, uh, online published their marketing materials. Uh, later, it was uh, removed from their websites, but you know, we have Web Archive and, and, and some other uh, uh, websites, so you can you can uh, we, we were able to get this information uh, uh, after after it was removed from from the websites. So they were this raison they were offering mass collection of all internet users in the country. Uh, so near intelligence, they they claim to have a profile on 152 uh, million Europeans, including. Uh, the, their location of uh, home location, workplace, and uh, places they are visiting frequently. And this, the third one, is very interesting because they developed, this company developed um, uh, uh, tool patterns, and I will show a screenshot uh, right now. So basically, uh, this is also from their marketing leaflet. So you can overview the current and past locations of the targeted individual. So you can target specific individual. You can then get the, all this information about the location, uh, who, uh, who are the people uh, who met with this, this person. Uh, it, it can automatically identify children, spouses, colleagues, colleagues uh, and so on. Of course, where, where, where the people usually moves and uh, uh, they, also claimed that they can send targeted messages, ads, or malware directly through the ad network to the mobile phone uh, phones of, of those uh, those individuals. Uh, so uh, the problem is that this company was uh, uh, co connected with the, another Israeli company called Nuviat, and they're registered as DSP, <coughs> and uh, they were, in 2020, they were receiving data from Google, uh, Twitter, uh, all Yahoo, Smart, OpenX, Amobi, PulsePoint, Rubicon, and, and so on and so on. So they, they really uh, got a lot of data, and that was completely legal. And here uh, was a little research. I mean, it was not some, some serious research, but just to show you um, how these companies are connected. So uh, this, this company who is developing the, the, the patterns, uh, they're connected with this re uh, company, Nuviat, which is a registered DSP. And um, one of the directors uh, uh, in 2017 joined the, the, uh, the board of directors of this uh, company, which is specializing in, uh, specialized in uh, interception of telecom communications. And then we have this company in Singapore, uh, Sovereign Systems, uh, who the director of this company uh, admitted for the media publicly 
uh, that this is just a front company, Israeli front, uh, co front company for Pick 6, which is Israeli company, and they sold the software to Bangladesh, and why is that important or interesting? Because Bangladesh officially, they don't have uh, any relations with Israel, and they even prohibit their citizens to visit Israel, but when they wanted to buy the software to spy on their citizens, of course, there were no limits. And another uh, in interesting uh, uh, country was uh, Hungary, uh, so they, they also uh, se uh, uh, sold uh, um, uh, uh, some, some spyware there, and they uh, organized some, um, some uh, education for, for those officers, and uh, then they wanted to show <coughs> how, how their software for uh, hacking the mobile phones is working, so they just selected random targets, uh, tar targets around, the, around the Budapest and they were spying on random people just to show how powerful the software is. So um, this, is, this is, I think this is really bad. I mean, if you want to do some demo, okay, you can set up some test lab, not to go to the, to the uh, EU country and then spy randomly on people to show how, how good you are. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, here is an um, example of um, uh, what kind of uh, data, uh, so, so how the, the individuals are, are classified. So you can see here military and protective services, energy and utilities, uh, uh, public finance, public policy, and so on. Uh, so uh, just uh, a, a couple of these uh, RTB profiles. So you can, you can see they were targeting people in the law enforcement, counterterrorism, national security, and so on people who worked in, uh, uh, in, in the courts, in the military. Of course, the political uh, the, uh, politicians, decision makers, and also the uh, employees of the uh, critical infrastructure like nuclear energy and so on. And of course, uh, the family and spouses of, of those people. So all those people uh, are probably, I guess, targets, and um, they're collecting uh, information about, uh, about them. Uh, so the question is what they're collecting. Of course, I explained those data like what they're buying online, what they're clicking and so on. But uh, also they did some psychological profiling. So they tried to identify people with financial problems, people with uh, mental health problems like depression and so on, and vulnerabilities, uh, sexual preferences. And uh, this was quite interesting for me. They try to ident identify whether those people uh, experienced sexual abuse in the past. And uh, I guess that this is probably because they wanted to collect some material to, to press on the people, to make a pressure on the people, uh, and uh, then to try to gain some, some access to, I don't know, some, some military organization or, or to win, uh, to, to get some business uh, and so on. So. Uh, I mentioned this word compromise and what, what is this? So this is uh, a word that originates from the Russian language uh, from the Soviet times uh, and it was the jargon of the Soviet secret police from the 1930s and basically the Wikipedia says this is disparaging information that can be collected, stored, traded or used strategically across all domains, political, electoral, legal, professional, ju judicial, media and business. And does not necessarily target some specific individuals, but uh, the, the secret police of Soviet Union, they were collecting this information just, uh, just to, to have it for use uh, for some later time. So they tried to have this information about every, everybody, and then if you came into their focus, they just uh, opened your, your dossier and checked whether they have something against you or, or not. Uh, and I think this, uh, this very, very clearly describes uh, the, the, the problem of this uh, 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 use or abuse the, the uh, advertising uh, information for intelligence purposes. So the question is that, uh, does this also uh, smells like Soviet times to you or or uh, do, uh, does this system and uh, what are these companies? And I, I would say these are probably not just Israeli companies. Israeli companies are probably the most, uh, the most uh, 
have most developed technology and probably they also do the best marketing, but I'm pretty sure that there are some other companies or organizations from other countries that are doing the same, but they're not so publicly visible. So does this uh, uh, maybe uh, 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 remind you of the, of the Stalin secret police and, and gulags and purges? And uh, if you are maybe you are saying, okay, I'm not so important, but the problem is that maybe you are not so important, but maybe your son is going to the same school as some local politician or some, some guy who is working in nuclear industry. So they know that you, you two know each other and maybe you will be the, uh, some, some uh, uh, pressure point to, to pressure on you and then you can provide some information about those, uh, those uh, guy who, who is really a target. Uh, so, uh, and if you're still not, uh, uh, if you still think, uh, thinking you, I'm not so important, then maybe you can try to remember to this poor guy at the, at the beginning of the, of the presentation. So I will finish here. Uh, this is this is a Photoshop <laughs> I did. Uh, so this is uh, Stalin and his f uh, funeral, but I just changed the the eye, <laughs> so he has I I opened, and he's uh, looking very curious what to find out about us. <laughs> so, are there any questions? <laughs> any questions? Uh, <laughs> and he's listening. <laughs> yeah. So if um, because sometimes you're talking about washing machines and then suddenly you you get Facebook ads about washing machines, so they're actually listening. Is yeah, actually, I have. Uh, I mean, this this was uh, the uh, speculation for a long time that uh, some uh, websites are or mobile applications are listening and then they're doing some uh, speech to text and they're serving ads. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, Mark Zuckerberg was also asked about this in the Congress. He denied that, of course. But I know a guy uh, who was working for one American company, and like 15 years ago, he, he told me that his boss has these ideas, and then he didn't want to tell me whether they implemented it or not. But uh, I think one month or two months ago, I, I have read an article or one report and they found out that basically, yeah, it's, it is happening. Probably not, uh, it's not so widespread, but it's happening. And I think with uh, these LLMs and uh, these uh, speech-to-text models, it's, it's very simple. So this is not the technology that, that can be reserved for, for some, you know, uh, national uh, state actors. You, you, can, you can download the, the, some, you know, this Whisper tiny model. You can run it on your phone and you can download it and, uh, and use it uh, for your own purposes. And I think th this, this is also a big problem. Yeah. Um, I know you said that they, there is no defense against it, but knowing this knowledge now that you've shared it, what, what would you do to counter that? Mm, yeah, so, okay, I, I, uh, at the beginning it was mentioned that uh, I'm also working and very interesting, uh, interested in the field of mobile security. So basically, um, my mobile phone is not running Android. I'm running, if you have heard of it, Graphene OS, which is very privacy and security oriented OS. And then I have my own VPN network, and on the VPN network I'm blocking uh, and analyzing traffic, traffic, and I'm trying to remove, you know, all the advert, uh, not all, because you cannot remove all the adver advertising uh, links and uh, and uh, web apps and so on. But it's funny because. Uh, I'm offering this to some of my friends, and <laughs> I remember uh, last uh, week uh, I installed this uh, to my friend's phone, and he said, and he called me back and said, "Wow, I'm 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 uh, missing a lot of uh, advertising, a lot of spam. <laughs> it's it's working. I I can see co completely different internet now. So I think that would be that would be one solution." Uh, but of course, I think it's not the ultimate solution. There will be always some loopholes. So, sorry. It, it is a game of cat versus mouse. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's interesting because if you were following the news, what happened in Lebanon, 
like uh, yesterday and, and the day, day before that. I mean, if uh, someone would say, uh, would, would be talking about this uh, one or two months ago, you would say, okay, this is uh, some movie stuff, uh, some high-tech science fiction movie stuff, and now we see it's real. So, <laughs> so you can ask yourself, okay, how much of the things that we think, okay, it is possible, but probably it's not happening, actually it is happening. Because when you think about it, it's not so hard to implement this thing. I mean, you don't need to be some you know, state actor uh, to implement this, th these things. All right. Uh -huh. All right. Coming. Here I am. Thanks for your talk. Uh, I was wondering, what's your opinion on the impact that the, the GDPR regulation and the frameworks the EU is setting up? Uh, are they having an impact on the racket they're pulling, or are they behind? Is this something Europe could potentially prevent from happening? Or yeah, I think yes, uh, to some extent, yes. Uh, however, here we are not just, I mean, we are talking about two things. One thing is, you know, this collection of data which is legal or it must operate within the legal framework, so the European Union can can change the legislation, make it a little bit tight. Uh, but on the other hand, we're also t talking about the, what intelligence agencies are doing, and of course, uh, there is not much regulation there. I mean, it could be it could be um, that uh, you will try to ban uh, I don't know technology from. China, Israel, and so on, but we know how that would go. I mean, if we, we decide to not to buy any Chinese products, we, we tried that with, uh, with Kaspersky. I mean, we, the uh, European Union and United States, they tried that with, with Kaspersky so, and with Huawei. And, uh, you know, Huawei phones are still sold in the European Union. Uh, 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 Kaspersky is still used in European Union. It's, it's prohibited to be used in, in public institutions, but you know they can. If there is one state actor, they can just create a new company, register it in Slovenia, Germany, or some something like that, and they, they can try to to sell the software. And for instance, these um, Israeli companies that are selling the spyware, if you have probably heard of Enso and Predator. And um, uh, they, they, they are uh, establishing a lot of uh, new companies, like startups, very quickly, and they're selling similar software. I was living um, for some time in, in uh, North Macedonia, and in North Macedonia they had a company, Cytrox, which, to which they said it's a Macedonian startup, but it was not. It was, of course, the Israeli company, and they were selling the software Predator, uh, with very similar capabilities like uh, um, uh, like uh, Enso, uh, uh, Spyware, and some some other uh, this this tools. So I, I guess that uh, when you have some some core application, it's very simple to to take this core to develop some new functionalities, uh, new mask, uh, new UI, establish new company, and when they they put you on the blacklist, like it happened to this Cytrox uh, company in Macedonia, because they ended uh, up in uh, uh, US blacklist. You just uh, go to other country, establish new company, and you know it's really a cat and mouse problem. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Uh -huh. Here we go. Um, now the source of most of the problems you described is the selling or the the getting this data, which is done by a US company, not a Russian company or something. It's Google aggregating all this data. Um, would it help, like their topics API or blocking third party cookies, or is it just a little drop of all the data that's collected? Like if we would stop advertisers from profiling and, and tracking and, and switch to something like topics? Yeah, I mean, the, if you are thinking about what the real cause of the problem is, of course, is the surveillance capitalism and the business model of this, those internet companies. But 
then you quickly uh, come in the field that you are fighting against the capitalism <laughs> or fighting against the, the corporations uh, and so on. And um, if you probably know the application signal, uh, so uh, Meredith Whitaker, uh, who is the director of the Signal Foundation, she, she had, I think, two or three weeks ago, one interesting interview. I don't remember when, where it was published, but she basically was talking about how they're trying to, to make different models. So they're not trying to, to profit uh, or, or with collecting of data, uh, but they're strictly pr protecting the privacy of their users. But uh, that um, has a very high price because, for instance, she, she was explaining that when they were um, uh, uh, developing uh, the support for Giphy, they need to rewrite the complete software. So they, they include something, they need to rewrite everything because the, the libraries, the APIs and so on, they're all based and have built in this, this surveillance features uh, because this, this, this is the world that we live in. So uh, it's, it's not very simple to change, to change this. And I also think that uh, if uh, okay, the European Union can can put some pressure on what could be collected and used by by advertising companies, but of course you cannot put too much pressure because this, this, there are also some freedoms for 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 those companies because those companies are doing legitimate business business and so on. So I think that small steps could be done, but nothing really drastically. Or uh, if you are you know really a little bit mad, then you just throw away your mobile phone or, okay, if you're not so, so, so radical, you, you try to use Graphene OS and you try to use Linux, and, but then finally you end up with your whole infrastructure. Like I'm using, I'm, I'm having, maintaining my own website, my own, my own uh, mail server, my own VPN network and so on. And I'm doing this because it's, it's fun for me, it's interesting for me, but I'm completely aware that for every user, this is no go. So I don't think there is some quick solution for, for those problems. All right, thank you. Anyone else? I, did you? Uh, no, no, sorry. All right, uh, let's give a big round of applause for Matei.